I've been commissioned again by my father-in-law to do a wedding bowl gift. So my thought, as it was with the last one, was to do a pattern that brings two things together. So it seems like that's the, the big idea with a wedding, is two, two parts coming together to make a whole. I picked out walnut and paduk to make this bowl out of. And the idea was to do two halves that will come together with a sort of rounded finger joint. I cut the pieces to size. And I spent a lot of time laying out exactly how much wood I was going to need. I was afraid I was going to run out with the pieces of wood that I got for this. But it turned out in the end I really... I spent too much time laying out the pieces and I ended up with a lot of extra. So I was fine. The piece of walnut that I got was about an inch and a half thick and the piece of paduke was a little bit less than an inch and they needed to be the same so I had to plane down the walnut to the thickness of the paduke. What I needed in the end of all of this cutting was to have pairs of pieces of each kind of wood to make the rings for the bowl. I had figured out the lengths for the segments based on the diameter of the rings I was going to need. I can set up a stop on the sled so that all of the segments are the same length for, for each ring. I'm stacking these in sets of pairs. Now normally my inclination would be to do a ring where the color is every other segment, but actually these rings are going to be half on a side so that you have walnut on one half and paduke on the other half. So I can start gluing up the rings. Now when I set up the fence on my sled, sometimes it works out perfectly and I get a perfect ring without any gaps. And sometimes it's just a tiny bit off and I get a little gap. So I glue the rings up with a spacer in the middle and glue them up in halves, which worked because I had the two different kinds of wood as well. So I could then sand the two halves and get them flat and then glue the two halves together. And this maintains the design concept with the two pieces coming together to make a hole. And then the rings are together. Now I sand each face of each ring so that they'll sit perfectly flat to each other when I glue up the bowl. And I can glue the rings together. I can use my new ring gluing clamp that I've made, which worked really well. One thing that I found with the clamp is that the washer that goes with the nut to hold the pieces down to each other has to be held up. If it falls into the bowl, it's very hard to get. <laughs> and it glued itself a little bit to the base. And this clamp only works if you've got a hole in the middle of the bowl. So if I was doing a very last bottom piece that was solid, I would have to do that differently, or at least not on the, the clamp and jig. The construction of the bowl is to glue up all the rings and then cut out the section where the two different kinds of wood come together. So it's similar to when I've cut a crack out of a bowl. It's the same idea. So I'll cut out a slice from the center of the bowl. I spent a long time trying to figure out exactly where that slice should be cut. You're trying to measure around a, a round spherical surface, trying to find the points at which I want to cut through. And it was just hard to cut all of the work that I'd done. <laughs> but the cut itself was really easy. I was going to have to sand the surfaces of the bowl that I cut, and I wasn't sure how straight the blade was going to be. So I wasn't exactly sure how much extra of the bowl I should leave to get the width that I wanted in the end. So the first cut I used my little sled for the bandsaw, and then the second cut I could just use a fence on the bandsaw because I had a flat surface to cut against. And I could make that cut. Really my goal was to get two halves that didn't have any of the wood from the other half on them. So one, one would be completely walnut and one would be completely duke. With the mixed section in the piece that I cut out.
Now to start building the new centerpiece, which will be the piece with the finger joints to hold the two different types of wood together. I made a set of practice segments for the infill ring that I'm going to build between the two halves. These practice segments will, will have two jobs. One will be to make sure that I'm making them the right size to make the right radius to fill in the section that I'm filling in. And they will also act as infill pieces to glue up that ring. I got some more paduke and walnut ready to make those segments. And it was the same as before where the walnut and the paduke need to be the same thickness and the same width. So I set up a fence on the CNC machine so I could put the two types of wood in the same place for each segment that I was gonna cut. And I could center the CNC router over that piece of wood and put in the correct bit and get it all set correctly. <laughs> and I could cut the finger joint or the puzzle piece <laughs> into the piece of walnut and into the piece of paduke. My practice pieces came in handy sort of as story sticks for, for this part of the project so that I knew how big to be making these segments. So I could then use the radial arm saw to cut off each segment. So I'm really just using the CNC machine to do the curvy part that the CNC machine is good at. And then the straight part I can do with the radial arm saw. So once I had it all set up, it was a lot of time cutting all of these, but it wasn't difficult. It was just doing the same thing over and over again. Cutting the curve and then walking over to the radial arm saw and cutting off the piece and then then cutting the next curve, going over the radial arm saw and cutting off the piece and back and forth and back and forth. So there were 10 segments, so there were 20 different curves to cut and 20 pieces to cut off. But it went just fine and there weren't any major screw ups, so it was good. Then it was a matter of gluing the two halves together. And I didn't have to offset the router from the line that I had for the curve. I could just cut the piece on one side of the line, then cut the other piece on the other side of the line, and they seem to go together nice and tight. And I clean the pieces up on the disc sander. So the challenge now is to cut an angle into these pieces so that they would fit into a ring. So I set up a clamp on my angle cutting sled just so I could hold a little piece and cut it. I really don't want to have my fingers that close to the blade. And one of the things that was a little bit of a challenge with these is it wasn't just a simple piece. It, it, it has a pattern in it that I wanted centered. So there was a lot of trimming off a little bit and, and flipping it over and cutting the other side and making it centered just exactly right. Then the length of each piece had to be cut so that the width of the ring would be right. When I clamp these together with the extra spacer pieces to get a complete ring, it still seemed just a little bit big for what I was gonna need. And I didn't wanna shorten the pieces with the pattern in it because then the, the pattern wouldn't be right. So what I ended up doing was taking a piece out. So I went from 18 segments to 17 segments which also meant recutting all the segments with a slightly different angle. It went from 10 degrees to 10.8 degrees, I think. But it worked, and the pattern stayed pretty much to what it was supposed to be. And then I could glue and clamp it together. Now I only glued the pieces with a pattern in them. The white spacer pieces I didn't glue. They're, they're just there to hold the ring. And once the glue is dry, I could take that apart. And you can see the, the white spacer pieces aren't glued together at all. And then I have the center ring. And you can see how it goes on the bowl. And it seems to be about right size-wise. And I could sand all of the surfaces that are gonna be glued. So the ring and then the two halves of the bowl. Now I was gonna want to clamp this with the rim of the bowl down on the table. 
So I wanted to shorten my center ring just a little bit so it would be even with the rim of the bowl. So I cut off some length of that and then sanded that top edge, which I really didn't need to do, but I got it really even. And then I could do the final glue with the three pieces of the bowl. Like I said before, the, the center section is going to dictate the section of the bowl. That's going to be the shape of the bowl. That's where there's material. So I had to get that glued in relation to the two halves exactly right so that I would have a, a bowl to find within that material. And I can take the clamps off. So this is actually the project was building up this shape. So now it's just a matter of turning this down into a bowl. I started with the bottom of the bowl making the tenon for the chuck. I figured that because there was a little bit of a wobble to the bowl, I would make the rim centered and then turn that wobble out on the bottom so that when I flip the bowl around and put the, the smaller chuck on, the bowl will be centered around the rim and that wobble can be taken out in the base where there's more thickness to take up that wobble, if that makes sense. <laughs> So once I had the bowl turned around and really ready to turn, it was fairly well balanced. One thing that I hadn't realized at all before putting it on the lathe was that the paduke is a lot heavier than the walnut, so that the actual weight of the bowl was off balance. It was nice and round, but it would definitely fall to the paduke side. So I couldn't go real fast with the, with the speed on the lathe. I turned the outside first starting at the rim and then working back towards the base. It doesn't really matter a whole lot, but that felt like what made sense. I did want to get the outside round before I really started working on the inside. And I used the scraper towards the end to get a, a smoother finish on the outside. With that center ring, I could basically just work towards the shape of that centerpiece because that's what was going to dictate the section of the, of the bowl. And then I could work on the rim, get that flat. Then I could start working on the inside. There was a lot of material to remove on the inside, but it went smoothly. And I used the scraper to smooth the surface on the inside and I can finalize the rim. I pushed the angle of the rim in so that it's higher on the outside and then lower on the inside. Then a bunch of sanding. I think I started at 60 grit and went all the way to 600. And with sanding, I find that the first grit is the hardest because you're, you're sort of getting to the really the final shape of the bowl. Once you've got it all right with the coarsest grit, then it goes fairly easy going through the other grits. Really, you're, you're just taking out the scratches from the previous grit. <laughs> and then the bowl was basically done, and I turned it around again so that I could work on the bottom. With the bottom, I'd been a little bit nervous because of that center ring, I didn't have a whole lot of material to work with to make the bottom of the bowl. So I just removed the extra material and brought the curve of the bowl around to the bottom, following the shape of that center ring. And then with the actual bottom, I didn't cut in and make an indent in the bottom. I just sanded off the extra nubbin and just made a flat bottom for the bowl which is a little bit tricky because I didn't really have any reference on the disc sander as to what was level. So it was a matter of sanding a little bit and then sort of checking it to see if it would sit right and then sanding a little more and sort of going back and forth doing that a few times. But it seemed to work. And then I put my mark on the bottom. I was going to put it in the center on the paduke, but I tested a piece and it kind of just gets lost on the darker paduke. So I put it on the walnut where it shows up a lot better and then some finish, and it started to look really nice at this point. 
So it worked. There was a lot of things that I hadn't done on this bowl, and I like the way it came out. It's something I've been thinking about for a long time. And it's one of the big reasons why I built the CNC machine was to build segmented pieces for wood turning. I think it opens up a whole different set of things that you can do. So it's not just straight segments anymore with, with straight designs. Thanks for watching.